Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought in this lesson what we would do is we would take a look at media management and more specifically backing up your projects. Now I got a great email from Bill Kirkwood from Glasgow, Scotland asking me just that, asking me about media organization inside of the Media Files folder and how you can get in and do things like backup projects. So that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. Now, normally what I say is let's get into Media Composer and Symphony and let's get started. But in this case, we're going to do something a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Windows E on my computer. I'm going to come into my data drive here, which is my Y drive. I'm going to come into Avid Media Files. I'm going to come into MXF into number one here. And you'll see here are all my media files. Now, it might look like a little bit of a disorganized mess, but believe it or not, these two files up at the top here are what keeps everything organized inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to close that folder. I'm going to Alt-Tab into Symphony, and you'll see that right now I'm in my Creative Cow project. What I'm going to do is go into the Clips bin, and you're going to see here are all the clips inside of this project. Now, at any time, what I can actually do is select one of the files. I can navigate up to File, and I can say Reveal File. And what's going to happen is, is that Symphony is actually going to show me that specific file inside of my Y drive or my data drive. Not really a good way to stay organized. So, how do we actually get in and see the media that's associated with this project? Well, you'll remember a few lessons ago we talked about the media tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to navigate up to Tools, and I'm going to come down to Media Tool you'll see that what's happened is, is that all of the projects that are on my machine right now are being displayed over here on the project side. And I know that all of the media is inside of the Y drive. Now, normally what I do is I say, well, you know what, just select all of the drives just in case there's any rogue media floating around anywhere. And I can say, you know, with the current project, show me the master clips, the pre-compute clips, which is the rendered files or titles that are created or imports that you have, and then the specific media files. And you'll see here they all are here. But again, this can be very daunting and very confusing, especially if you want to back things up. So how do we go about getting in and backing things up and staying as organized as we can possibly be when we're done a project? Well, let's do this first of all. What I'm going to do here is just create a very brief sequence here, just with a few clips. Again, I'm just going to mark in and out points, hit B on the keyboard. B for overwrite, I guess. Actually, we'll say B for Bob on both Mac and Windows to overwrite these clips into a timeline. And you're going to see why I'm doing this in just a second. Now, of course, I do have a sequences bin here. So I should really stick that sequence in the sequences bin. And we'll do that right now, I think. There we go. We'll hit B again. And what we're going to do, like I said, we'll open the sequences bin. We'll take the sequence. We'll stick it in here. We're going to call this for archive. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to, we don't even need to minimize that here. What we're going to do is actually minimize Symphony, And we're actually going to Alt-Tab into Firefox. Now, what I encourage every Media Composer and Symphony editor to do is to head over to this website that you see right up here at the top of the page. F-I-O-O-L dot N-M dot R-U slash P-R-O-G-Z slash. This is a media utility tool for Media Composer and Symphony. And the one that you're going to want to download is right here, version 0 0.2, build 10, February 2007. Download it. It's going to take about three seconds to download onto your computer. It's a very, very small file. Again, like I said, absolutely 100% free. What's going to happen is that when you download it, you're going to see that it's a simple .exe file that I've actually created a shortcut for right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch it. I'm going to say run it. And what I'm now brought to is the Media Database Viewer for Avid Applications. You'll see right now it's immediately identified where my media file folders are, which is on the Y drive. And all I'm going to do is simply say scan. What it's going to do now is it's going to display for me all of the media associated with projects on my media drives. Very, very cool. Now, believe it or not, what I could do is I can actually archive something from here. I can even delete stuff from here. So, for example, if I didn't need the Creative Cow 1080i project, you'll see once I select it, I'm actually shown all of the media and even the size of the media and where it actually is when it was created and what project it's with by simply just clicking on the project over here. What I can do now is come in and I can actually delete, move, or copy individual files 
inside of this project. What I can also do is I can do things from the project level as well. You'll see I can store projects and I can even delete all media related to the project. But like I said, what we wanted to talk about here was we wanted to talk about uh, not only you know organizing, more specifically archiving a project. Now the project that I'm working in right now is simply called Creative Cow. You're going to see that it's 2.5 gigabytes big, but we got a couple things going on here that we don't really need. You're going to see that I have all of these renders here, this BMXing. These files here, these uh, .mxf files, are renders that I did or possibly titles that I created. All of the actual imported media is this media right here. You'll see right here, this is clip 1060 from Video Tracks HD. It's a .mxf file, meaning I imported it. And what I can do if I come back into Symphony, that 1060 file is actually located right here. It's the Golden Gate Bridge. So you'll see a very visual way to actually get in and quickly go from one to the other. You can say, look at this. There's this media file called, you know, in this case, 1060 Video Tracks HD. Here it is inside of my folder. Now what I want to do is I actually want to delete those extra files, those pre-compute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to the Tools menu. I'm going to come all the way down to Media Tool. And I'm going to select the current project, but I'm only going to select pre-computes. And I'm going to say OK. You'll see there are those BMXing pre-computes that I had in the project. And you'll see if I come back over here to the Media Database Viewer, that's what it told me they were right here. I also have something called Untitled Sequence, which again is probably a render. You'll see the file sizes for these are very small, in a lot of cases kilobytes big. You'll see the actual media itself, 155 megabytes, almost 70 megabytes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what I'm going to do is come back into the media tool. We're simply going to delete these pre-computes. You'll see right there these are renders, so let's delete them. There they go. What I'm going to do is come back into the viewer. We're going to come back up and we're simply going to scan again. We're going to come back to the project and take a look at that. They're now all gone. Okay, so Let's talk about now specifically archiving a project. What I'm going to do is come back into Symphony, and you'll see that I have a timeline here. Now we talked a little bit about this previously when we talked about the media tool, but this is where this is really going to come into play. So hypothetically, our project is finished. Now we have two options. We can archive everything that we have inside the project if we want to, or we can archive just the actual media that we've used inside the project itself. So if we wanted to archive everything in the project using our Media Database Viewer, all we simply have to do is select the Creative Cow project. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say Store Project. What I'm going to be asked for is where do we want the target folder to be? Now in this case, what I'm going to do is just select the desktop. You'll see we can store the relative paths. We can add a drive letter to the relative path. We can store the MXF and OMF media separately. You'll see that's actually how things are organized on my media drive. Now, if I wanted to, I could simply say, OK. In this case, I actually don't have anything in the OMF media files folder, so it's not a big deal. Now, you'll see that we can also move the files. All media files will be moved to the target folder. And then I can simply say store. And what's going to happen is, is that it's going to take everything from the entire project and it's going to archive it into that folder. But that's not what I want to do. I'm only going to archive what I'm actually using. So let me show you how in Symfony we're going to use it in conjunction with the Media Database Viewer to only archive what we actually want to archive. So what we're going to do is just cancel out of this. I'm going to come back into Symfony. That's an Alt tab for Windows. Obviously Command tab for all my Mac friends out there. I'm going to select the sequence like such. And again, we're going to go back to Tools and we're going to go to the Media Tool. We're going to select the master clips for the current project only. We're going to say, actually, let's select the master clips and the media files here. I'm going to say OK. What we're going to do is we're going to select our sequence, and I'm going to say inside of bin, what we want to do is I'm going to say, show me the media relatives. So what I'm going to do is say, select media relatives. Now, everything that's highlighted is media and master clips that are in this current sequence. I don't want to delete those. What I actually want to do is I want to come back up to bin and I want to reverse that. So now everything that I have selected is is clips that aren't actually in this timeline. And how do I know that? We'll take a look. You can see right here this clip it has an in and out point for 719. It's in the timeline. These have nothing. Nothing. You'll see I can scroll down. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Now remember these are the master clips and you'll see right above it is the associated media file. So if I select delete, what I'll do is I'll delete 18 media files or video files. 
I'm going to say OK and I'm going to say delete, you'll see when I close the media tool, everything here is still online. But if you take a look at my bin here, everything that I didn't have selected is now offline. And of course what I can do is I can actually switch back to the media viewer here and I can come back and I can simply say scan and take a look here what I have now. I only have those five files that are located inside of my timeline. And guess what? Instead of archiving almost three gigabytes, what we're going to archive now is less or a little bit more than half a gigabyte. A lot more manageable. Now the great thing is, is that with the size of hard drives these days, you know, you can get two terabyte hard drives, etc. If you had a big project and wanted to archive everything, you could actually do it very quickly and very easily using the method I'm going to show you. All you'd have to do is instead of selecting the desktop like I did, just select the destination drive you want to send it to, whether it's you know an external hard drive or whatever, and just send the media files there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to come here. I'm just going to switch back into Symphony for one second here because we're going to close this project. And let's just come into a you know, different project. We'll come into Creative Cow 1080i. Now the reason I'm doing that is because if I attempt to do this from the project window, Symphony or Media Composer can get a little bit confused or annoyed and quite possibly could crash. That's why I like to come into a project, sit it here, and then I can do things outside of this project that's really not going to impact anything at all. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to head back into our Media Database Viewer here. Again, you'll see that if I now come into the Creative Cow project, there are the five media files that are associated with that sequence. What we want to do now is we want to archive this project. So let's do that. So because we went in and we organized the project and we deleted everything we didn't need from inside the media tool, like I said, we know that these five files here are ones that are associated with the clips that are in my timeline. So I don't need to get in and do anything to these individual clips. I'm going to do it to the actual project itself. What I'm going to do is right click and we're going to say store projects. You'll see it's going to ask me for the target folder, so I'm just going to create one on the desktop here. We'll just say new folder. We'll call this uh, Kevin's Stock Footage Project Archive. doesn't even really matter what we call it. You can obviously call this whatever you like. We're going to say OK. And what we want to do is we want to move the files. Now, what is that going to do moving the files? Well, if I don't select Move Files, it's going to take the files and it's going to copy them and it's going to make a duplicate of them leave them inside that Avid Media Files folder and what's going to happen is that it's not going to get deleted from your system so you're really not going to free up anything. You'll be archiving it but you're still going to need to go back into the media tool to actually get rid of things. By moving it, we're taking it from one location, moving it and then deleting what was there originally. So all I'm going to do now is simply say store. You'll see there we go here. It's moving those items. What I can do now is simply say scan. You'll see all of those files are gone and even the project that it's associated with is gone as well. Now you'll see that Symphony is now going to scan because it knows that files have been removed from the Avid Media Files folder. So what it's going to do is it's going to scan the database and rebuild it. And while it's doing that, what I'm going to do is just hit Windows E here because there's something that I also need to add to this folder here. You'll see here's the folder and inside it there are the five media files that we saw inside of our database manager. What I also need to add in here is the actual project itself. So what I'm going to do is just rename this media. And let's just see is our scan done yet? Nope, it's still going. So we're just going to let it go in the background. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to the Y drive. I'm going to come into the Avid projects. I'm going to select Creative Cow. We're going to copy that project. We'll head back to the desktop. We're going to come to my stock footage and I'm just simply going to paste it in like such. Now I've got the project with the bins that I had in there, sequences and clips, as well as the settings for the project, and I have a folder that says media. Now obviously I moved this to the desktop, but if you had taken this and moved it onto an external drive, you can now unplug that external drive, stick it on a shelf, and then wait for whenever your client's going to come back and say, oh, okay, I really need to work on that project now. You know what? No problem. I have it archived. Let me unarchive it for you. Now we're just going to give this couple more minutes here to see if it'll finish itself up. Very cool. I love the way it does that sometimes. You know, it gets about three quarters of the way through and then seems to just figure itself out and then instantly finishes. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to close this project because remember, I haven't deleted the Creative Cow project yet. I've copied it over because I wanted to come in and show you that inside the sequences bin, if I double click on that sequence, there's no audio. Everything has been moved. So what we're going to do here is just for hypothetical purposes, we'll come back into that 1080i project and we're going to delete that project. 
inside of Avid Media. That's actually not inside Avid Media Files, inside Avid Projects. There it is right there, Creative Cow, goodbye. And now what do we have? We now have our project completely archived. So now the client's going to come to us and say, you know what? Remember that project you did two years ago? I really need to unarchive it now. You know what? No problem. Now, like I said, in most cases, you would actually do all of this without even going into Symphony or Media Composer. In this case, it takes a little, you know, a little bit of time for me to launch the application, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it all from within Symphony, and you'll see actually what sort of the ramifications are. You saw the database rebuild that's required. Obviously, the more media that you're moving, the longer that database rebuild is going to take. So what we're going to do is just minimize Symphony here, and let's come to the desktop here. Just close all these extra windows that I don't need. We're inside of Avid Projects. We're going to come in. We're going to take our project, Creative Cow. We're going to drag it in so it's with all the other projects. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Windows E. We're going to come onto the Y drive, Avid Media Files, MXF, number one. We're going to take this media, and we're just simply going to copy it in here like that. There it is. Now, as soon as I step back into Symfony, because Symfony knows that I've updated that folder, it's immediately going to go through and it's going to scan all the media files again to say, okay, what has changed? Now, in most cases, because it's already done a scan before, you'll see it's a relatively quick scan now. And probably any second here, it's going to be finished. And you see, boom, just like that, it's done. Now, the question is, did it actually do it? Did it actually put my media back and relink it to that sequence? Well, let's find out. Let's go into the Creative Cow project. Let's go into sequences. Let's double click on our sequence and take a look at that. There's all my media now back ready for me to update whatever project my client happens to be working on. So as you can see, this Media Database Viewer for Avid Applications, a free, tiny application, but such a powerful way to get in and archive all of your projects. Like I said, absolutely free. You need to head on over to that website I showed you earlier and download it. I guarantee you it's going to save you so many headaches in the long run, it is well worth the time. If you've got any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.